Hi everyone, welcome back to Believer Science Academy, Bengaluru. In this session, we will continue the previous year prelims question paper discussion. And in today's class, we will be discussing questions from environment and ecology. Okay, so this part is one of the most favorite part of UPS, you can say. Every year there will be 10 plus questions and in previous year 2024, there were around 13 questions and in 13 questions, most of the questions were from current affairs, you can say, but there were some questions from static part also. So we'll today understand how you can answer a environment and ecology question through common sense and other things. So without any delay, we'll start to the discussion. Okay. So the first question is question number seven. Question number seven is talking about with reference to perfluoroalkyl and pulp perfluoroalkyl substances that is PFAS that are used in making many consumer products consider the following statements. One, PFAS are found to be widespread in the drinking water, food and food packaging materials, are not easily degraded in the environment, persistent exposure to PFAS can lead to bioaccumulation of the body in the bodies. Okay, so we will first understand about PFAS. What is PFAS? It is a chemical which is resistant to grease, oil, water and heat that makes it a good uh, that makes it a good chemical for consumer products such as packaging of drinking water, food and food packaging etc. Because it is resistant to grease, oil, water and heat. Okay, So that is why statement 1 becomes right, food packaging etc. And it is are not easily degraded in the environment because these are chemically different but all the PFAs are a strong carbon bond that is why they don't degrade easily. So statement number two is right okay because they have a strong carbon bond they do not degrade easily in the environment. So they act as a pollutant actually and since it is a chemical once you start intaking it because it is connect it is present in food and water uh, water packaging by in, by chance if you consume those things it is going to bioaccumulate okay what is bioaccumulation the accumulation of pollutants from the nature to the first uh, species in trophic level okay so that is bioaccumulation and what is biomagnification biomagnification is as we move from one trophic level to another trophic level okay trophic level trophic level in this one okay so here basic will be uh, producers consumers okay so if it is consumed by it is present in producers if it is consumed by one like uh, animal in this consumer part and if it is again consumed consumed by another consumers it keeps on increasing okay so it keeps on biomagnifying from nature to first species in the trophic level it is called as bioaccumulation from one uh, species from one tropic level to another tropic level it is considered as bioaccumulation so here for this answer for this question the correct answer is d all the above okay d is the correct answer question number 18 consider the following this is dealing with species okay upsc tends to ask at least one or two questions every year about the species and different types of species as well as their like genre etc etc so first one consider the following state following carbid beetles centipedes flies termites wasps etc so sp uh, para Parasitoid species are found in how many of the above kind of organisms? First, you will understand what is parasitoid. Okay, you know parasites. Okay, what is parasites? These are kind of germs which, when uh, in infected into the body, they lead to Im uh, like bad implications of the health. Okay, these parasites not only affect individuals like human beings, they also affect animals and plants also. A parasitoid is an insect. Okay, that insect which is larger in size that feeds on other other uh, other other um, what is say other insects or animals okay it uh, makes other animals as a host and it starts consuming those animals okay these insects uh, such as larvae the insects uh, like beginning like eggs are called as larvae these larvae are uh, these are these larvae are present in another animal and they start feeding on the particular animal and they get the nutrition from those particular animals okay in this process by getting the nutrition and food from the other animals they kill the they end up killing the host animal these are called as parasitoids so these parasitoids act as a predator as well parasites they feed on the host and kill the animal examples include wasp beetles worms and flies okay and there are so 
the answer is wasps, beetles, flies. These three are right. What about centripetes and termites? You know centripetes, centripetes have a hard exoskeleton. They are predators, meaning they prey on the animals, they prey on the animals, they hunt for hunt the animals and then they eat them. So they don't they don't need a host or any kind of animal for the food intake. So these are predators and they are not considered as parasitoid. Termites, similarly, these are the termites which are found in ground and they form a termite hound, like uh, these are called, okay, termite hounds. These are also parasites in nature, like uh, predators in nature, similar to ants. They hunt other animals and then they eat. So these are also not considered as parasitoids. So the correct answer here is option B, only three. Okay, option B, only three. And question number 19. Consider the following plants. Again, dealing with the species. Species. One groundnut, two horse crumb, three soya bean. How many of the above belong to pea family? Okay, this is asking about plant kingdom. In plant kingdom, pea family are also called as legume plants or also called as bean fabric, bean fabric family. Okay, bean fabric family. Examples of pea family include obviously peanut and then horse gram and soybean so all the three are belonging to pea family and uh, interesting fact peanut is the it is the only nut only nut which is grown under the underground which grows underground so here the answer is c all the three here you can just guess the answer since uh, some form of the way okay here because ground nut horse gram and soybean if you have seen those things all the uh, like <clears throat> all those look like nuts so if they are if they are nuts, more for possibility is that they belong to pea families. Okay. And question number 20. Indian flying fox is placed under vermin category in the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Statement to the Indian flying fox feeds on the blood of other animals. And there are options. Both statement and two and two are correct, and two explains statement one, etc. etc. So first we'll understand what is vermin, and then we'll go into our understanding what is Indian flying fox. Okay. So there is Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Initially, it uh, had six schedules where, like, uh, animals were divided based on the schedules on the based on their protection levels. The, uh, like animals which are included in Schedule One enjoyed highest number of highest level of protection. Schedule Two lower level of protection, and Three Four similarly. And Schedule Five included vermins. Okay, vermins are the animals which are actually considered as a danger to the uh, crops and other things, danger and destructive. Okay, and killing of these animals were allowed in uh, Schedule 5 and Schedule 6 was plants. But recently in 2020, uh, 2022 amendment, they reduced Schedule 6 to 4 schedules. Schedule 1 includes highest protection that is such as elephants, uh, tigers, etc. And Schedule 2, lower level protection. Schedule 3 deals with plants and Schedule 4, again, those are those uh, animals which are included in sites. Okay, sites is a convention uh, like where it uh, <coughs> restricts export and import of critical endangered animals so those are included in schedule 4 and vermin is a different category now it is not included in any four schedules it is outside of the schedules and vermin as i said it is a destructive and that can be killed so flying fox it is a bat okay it is a bat a flying fox name its name says that a fox is flying but initially like actually it is a bat it is a large bat and its another name is food eating bat okay because it is a food eating fox or food eating bat it is also called as Nectivores. Nectivores in the sense they feed on nectar which is present in fruits and plants. Okay. Since they are fruit eating fox, they tend to destroy fruits or crops of the farmers. So these are declared as vermins by some of the states. So they are declared as vermins. So statement number one is right. And the statement number two is saying that they feed on the blood of other animals. As I clearly said that it is also called as fruit fox. So they, are, they, they do not feed on the blood. So statement number two is wrong. So here the option is statement one is correct and statement two is incorrect. Okay. So another thing is in environment, you should be particular about Wildlife Protection Act, Biodiversity Act and other important acts. Okay. Every year there will be one or other question from these acts. And now moving on to the next question. So this is again dealing with the species. The organisms, cicada, frog hopper and pond skaters are a birds, B fish, C insects, and D reptiles. Just by knowing the cicada or frog upper, you can answer this answer. You can answer this question. The correct answer is insects. Okay. And then moving on to question number 22. It deals with environmental pollution. 
So statement one is many chewing gums found in the market are considered as a source of environmental pollution. Statement two, many chewing gums contain plastic gum as a base. We have to choose the correct answer. That is A. Statement one and two are correct, and statement two explains one. One and two are correct. As statement two doesn't explain statement one. One is correct. Other two is incorrect. One is incorrect, but two is correct. So here, what is chewing gum? Okay, chewing gum is a delicacy which is like used all over the world. Most of the times they are used as a freshness, mouth freshness, and other things. But the chewing gum is uh, like a delicacy which has a plastic base. Okay, it is a plastic base. Since it has a plastic base, plastic base, after consuming it, you don't swallow it. You spit it out. When you spit it out, it acts as a pollutant. So because it has, uh, like because it it is environment, it is considered as a polluting agent. So statement one is correct. That is, it is uh, found in market are considered as a source of environmental pollution. This is correct. And statement two is many chewing gum contain plastic as a compass. This is also true. But does it explain statement? Does it does the statement say explain statement one? That is also correct because since it has plastic in its base, it is considered as a environmental pollutant. So a correct answer is A. Statement one and two are correct, and stated statement two explains statement one. Okay, and then again uh, dealing with species. Consider the following pairs. Pairs. Country Brazil, animal found in this natural habitat is Indri, Indonesia, elk, Madagascar, bonobo. So here the answer is none of the above because Indri is found in Madagascar. Madagascar is the Madagascar is the second largest continent. It is present on the offshoot of next to uh, African continent. And elk or red deer, it is native to Northern America. And bonobos, they are found in Congo rivers. If you search up these images of these animals, you will know the differences between these animals. Bonobos are almost similar to chimpanzees without any hairs. Okay, it looks like a chimpanzee without any hairs. Whereas elk indri belongs to tarsier family animals. These are found in Madagascar. If you watch Madagascar movie, which is an animated movie, you would know what I am talking about. And elk is a red deer, which is present in Northern America. So here the answer is none of the above correctly matched. Like after this class, or now pause it and just search the animals. They are very beautiful animals. They are found in different regions. And question number twenty-four. It is uh, dealing about World Toilet Organization. Yes, there is an organization called World Toilet Organization. Statement one. It is one of the agencies of United Nations. Okay. Statement number two. World Toilet Summit or World uh, and World Toilet Day, World Toilet College, or initiatives of this organization to inspire action on global sanitation crisis. Three main focus of this is to grant funds to least developed countries and developing nations to achieve the end of open defecation. Okay, first we will understand what is World Toilet Organization. World Toilet Toilet Organization is an NGO or non-profit organization. It is a only consultative uh, consultative to it only has a consultative status in UN United United Nations organization and it is not an agency. So statement number one is wrong. If you know about agencies. Such as uh, World Meteorological, or like World Meteorological, Meteorological Organization, okay, uh, FAO, Food and Organization, Food and Agricultural Organization, WHO, World Health Organization. These are some of the agencies of United Nations. WHO, FAO, World Meteorological Organization. These are certain agencies of United Nations. If you know about United Nations, you would have an idea about uh, agencies of United Nations. But I am pretty sure you have never heard of World Toilet Organization being the agencies of United Nations. So statement one is wrong. Statement two is correct. World Toilet Summit happened in 2001. On the same summit, they declared World Toilet Day, and then in 2005, they started World Toilet College with the aim of creating action against global sanitation crisis. Statement number three: the focus is. To achieve end of open defecation, but it is not a, a, a like a granting funds to least developed countries. It only provides a platform for discussing discussions, and it doesn't provide any funding. So statement three is also wrong. So the correct answer is A two only. Okay. So although it tries to create awareness and it for like fight for open defecation free status, but it doesn't provide any funding. It only provides a consultative uh, recommendations and suggestions. Then 25 again environmental biodiversity. Let us talking about species again. Lions do not have a particular breeding season. 
the statement is correct because they do not have any particular breeding season. Normally, there is a gap of two years for uh, like female lioness lions to have a cub. So, statement one is correct. Unlike most other big cats, cheetahs do not do, do not roar. Okay, in uh, cat family, cat family such as tiger, lion, leopard, jaguar, these are all the uh, cat cats which can roar. Okay, big cats that can roar. Whereas cheetah, it is a purring cat. Purring cat. It is similar to house cats where it starts purring. So statement number two is correct. Unlike male lions, male leopards do not proclaim their territory by scent making. This is wrong because most of the big cats, they use their scents through faces or urine to mark their territory. So the correct answer is one and two only. If you watch any geography, like uh, National Geography channels, if you watch any Discovery channels, and if you watch any program of these channels, you would know these things very easily. Okay? You could you would have seen our lions, uh, like, like, like any documentary about lions, so like saying that they have no breeding seasons, they can have children whenever they want it. Okay, that is why male lions, whenever they take over other prey, they, the first thing they do is they kill the small cubs so that female lions or lionesses become ready for the mating season again. Mating, mating again, not for a particular season, but mating. And unlike other big cats, you would have seen moths, uh, tigers, cheetahs, tigers, leopards, uh, lions roaring, whereas cheetah only purrs. And then you would have seen male leopards uh, like using their urine and faces on the trees etc to mark the territory so do like it is not only about books that you should be focusing on for upc environment and ecology you should also have a look again look on uh, these environmental documentaries and your movies etc etc programs in like national geography discovery that goes uh, helps in your upc films also and then uh, which of the following is correct description of 100 million farmers 100 million farmers, similar to World, uh, World Toilet Organization, it is a platform and its platform same is to accelerating transition towards food and water systems that are net zero, nature positive and aims to increase the farmer resilience. What is net zero? Net zero is whatever the amount of greenhouse gases you are releasing, you should be able to absorb the same amount. Okay, so there should be a net zero balance. So the correct answer here is option A. And other things are international alliance are working in and farming organization interested in supporting strengthening development of organic formula from animal and husbandry that is wrong it is a digital platform fully integrated with service providers and built on blockchain that lets buyers sellers and third parties trade fertilizers quickly and securely that is also wrong d it is also wrong so correct answer is option a these kind of questions are very tricky so here better better thing is if you know the correct answer you can attend it but if you know that, if you don't know any answer, it is better to leave these questions. Because in UPSC, the aim is to clear the prelims and not to score 100 out of 100. So choose your questions correctly and don't make any unnecessary, don't take any unnecessary risk and don't make any silly mistakes. Okay, because there is a negative marking also. And then uh, consider the following, battery storage, biomass generators, fuel cells, rooftop solar photovoltaic units. How many of the above are considered as distributed energy resources? What is distributed energy resources? The energy source is present at the consumer side. From their energies, uh, energy, energy that generated and they are distributed from, for, for the consumer. Okay, so they are also called as small generation units. Small generation units. Examples are battery storage. Okay, biomass generators. Okay, fuel cells and rooftop solar photovoltaic units. The correct answer is all the four. Okay, you could use this common sense here, you could have answered this one. What is distributed energy resources? They are present at the consumer source only. Okay, normally what happens is energy is generated at a particular disco and then it is transferred to various houses where the, gen the energy is generated through various other means. But normally what happens is in you know, small homes and small industries, they are using biomass, uh, like bio biomass generators, battery storage, fuel cells, rooftop, solar, solar photovoltaic units. In case the power is not available because of some energy out or, or like energy out that then at that time you can use these kind of resources okay there is no distinction between all these things they are more more or more or less similar to each other so the answer could have been easier here which of the following shows unique relation with an insect that has co-evolved with it and that is the only insect that can pollinate this tree tree okay the answer here is fig tree you, in this set of questions, you can use the common sense. Okay, fig is the only tree which is a uh, fruit-producing tree there. Okay.
okay fruit is the only fruit tree tree so you could have answered this one so mahua tree sandalwood silk cotton are not fruit producing trees i mean they produce fruits but they are not as a fruit tree where you can consume it fig you can consume it so you could have used this you, you could have guessed this these three are more more or less similar and fig is different so fig has a relation with wasp in the fig produces certain kind of perfume which attracts the wasp the reason why it attracts wasps is wasps act as a pollinating agents okay and wasps are the only ones who are capable of pollinating figs that is why the correct answer is option a fig and then again species biodiversity uh, like dominated uh, last year's uh, environment and ecology uh, consider the following butterflies fish frogs how many of the above uh, have poisonous species among them okay there are n number of species in butterflies More, like for example uh, for example there are some butterflies with the uh, stark in color uh, like stark in colors those are considered as a poisonous and in fishes also there are many fishes for say example puffer fish puffer sorry <coughs> puffer fish it is considered as a poisonous and in frogs most of many of the frogs which are found in amazon are even in western guards with the uh, stark colors and bright colors these are considered as poisonous fish it is said that the more brighter or more contrast like more unique the color more poisonous the frog is so the answer here is d now in butterflies monarch butterfly monarch butterflies it is a species of butterfly which contains poison and in fish puffer fish and in frogs many of the frog species and then again question number 30 again it deals with biodiversity consider the following cashew papaya red sanders how many of the above trees are actually native to india okay so the correct answer here is three red sanders only because cashew and papaya they are not native to india for example cashew belongs to brazil and they were introduced in india by portuguese because portuguese were ruling both both brazil as well as india during that time and papaya it belongs to central asia central america such as mexico and costa rica britishers they used to rule this region when they were ruling this region they brought the papayas to india so the correct answer is only one okay you could also use this one you could use your history knowledge here because you know about the impact of portuguese you would be reading that they introduced many crops such as cashews okay pepper etc etc so the, this this question could have been easily answered and then uh with reference to radio question number 31 radio isotope thermoelectric generators consider the following statements one rtgs rtgs are miniature fission reactors rtgs are used to power powering the onboard systems of air, air spacecraft rtgs can use plutonium 238 which is a by product of weapons development so the you have to choose the correct answer what is rtgs it is a radio isotope thermoelectric generators okay so the statement only is it is talking about miniature fission reactors what is fission fission is there is a like <clears throat> there is an atom fission breaks this atom into two parts when there is a breaking of these two parts it produces energy vast energy this energy is used to run different kind of uh, different kind of <clears throat> vehicles or uh, industries this kind of fission uh, technique is used in nuclear reactors okay nuclear reactors but whereas in the rtgs rtgs it is not used in rtgs it is also referred as nuclear battery but the it is a misnomer because it doesn't convert any it doesn't have any nuclear re reactions here instead what it does is it is it produces energy by radioactive decay of plutonium 238 uh, to electric uh, like to electricity it converts radioactive decay of plutonium 238 into electricity through thermocouples okay so here the process is use of thermocouples where it converts radioactive decay of 238 plutonium 238 there is no re like fission reaction involved here okay there are two actual main reaction fission and fusion fission is used in nuclear reactors and fusion okay whereas fusion it is found in sun and there are still uh, you know uh, like the active uh, yeah, what you say uh, there is a effort going on around the world to create active fusion reactors in the by human being but it is still in the uh, development stage 
So like for example, like uh, one of the prototype of nucleus fusion reactor is called a stokamak. Okay, and then so the correct answer here is no. And so statement number two, it is used in used for powering the spacecraft. It has been already been used by USA and RTGs can use plutonium two thirty eight, which I already explained here. So the correct answer here is two and three, except fusion reactors. Everything else is correct. Okay, and then. 32 consider the following statements it is kind of geography and environment mix uh, question giant stars and science and technics question giant stars live much longer than dwarf stars compared to dwarf giant stars giant stars have a greater rate of nuclear reactions okay here statement 2 is correct okay why statement 2 is correct since giant stars are huge in like huge in size very large in size they have a greater rate of nuclear reactions because a uh, nuclear reaction is faster compared to dwarf stars they tend to die out earlier than dwarf stars okay the nuclear element present in these kind of stars die out earlier so the statement one is wrong they don't live longer than dwarf stars since so dwarf stars are the stars which live longer than giant stars statement 2 compared to dwarf stars giant stars have a greater rate of nuclear reaction so statement 2 is correct statement one is incorrect the correct answer is a, b uh, 33 which of the following is synthesized in human body that dilates blood vessels and increases blood flow it is kind of science and tech and uh, environmental question so the correct answer here is it is straight forward you either know it or you don't know it but if you have a medical background you would be knowing this answer you could be easily guess this one so the correct answer here is nitric oxide okay it is an element which is a chemical which is very essential for for human being it helps in blood flow helps in circulation of oxygen etc etc so higher the nitric oxide amount in your body more healthier your body and more more healthy metabolism your body body causes or else there will be negative implications for body and then uh, identification narcotics this science and science and technology based we'll do tomorrow rafael meg it is also science and tech or defense related we'll do it tomorrow and then i guess this is in this is done with environment and ecology okay there is a uh, international relations come environment questions so we'll try to attend that one consider the following statements india is a member of international grains council a country needs to be a member of international grains council for exporting and importing rice and wheat so here the uh, about grains council it is an international organization and platform so india yes it is a member of international grains council and what is the function of grains council it designates countries either as a exporter or importer based on their balance okay if they are importing more they are considered as importer if they are exporting more they are considered as exporter but however it is not necessary to be a member of the country for exporting and import exporting and importing rice and wheat so statement 2 is wrong you could use the common sense here many countries export and import wheats and rices but not all the countries need to be member of such a council okay so i guess these are all the questions of environment and ecology and this ends our discussion for today if you have any doubts regarding this class please write in the comment box and if you have any suggestions for me also write in the comment box uh, if you want any other kind of videos if you have any ideas regarding the youtube videos do write in the comment box again if you like the video like it share it and comment on the video and also subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon with this i will end the today session jai hind jai karnataka